Hello everyone, welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about SWI Spine. So, a few weeks ago, I posted on the social media, LinkedIn and Instagram, uh, SWI of the Spine. And uh, you guys had a response there and asked me if I could make a video. So here I am today. If you're interested, stick around and I will show you how I did it. For those who are new, my name is Magnin again. I'm an MRI Red Argon for in my channel. I'm covering things from basic to advanced MRI topics, tutorials just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. SWI is a very common in the brain imaging. However, outside the brain is uncommon. It's possible, but it's not usual. However, I did some tests and today I want to share with you how I did it. Let's go to the scanner and I will show you. All right, we are currently at 3T. Uh, Siemens scanners. However, the most of the basic stuff I'm going to show you today, I'm pretty sure you can adapt this to any vendors. So uh, let me show you. What we have here first is a localizer, two steps localizer covering the whole spine, and then we have uh, SWI of the spine divided in three steps: cervical, toracal, and then lumbar. So let's run this localizer. So first, I'm just going to show you how. I position it and then I'm going to share you some of the parameters so you can adapt this to your scanner. As you can see I'm trying to cover the cervical spine and then have a saturation band at the anterior part. I'm just going to do a positioning in the coronal plate as well. For torical part I usually do like this. I copy the previous step, steps with cervical so I have the position of that one. And then I go up here, I go and check for that specific VIDA scanner is 60 millimeter. So like this, I know it's 60 and then I push OK. And then I could just do control seven and there will be a very good overlap. Like that, control seven on the keyboard. And then I would know there would be a perfect overlap. So remember to position in the two plates, sagittal and coronal. So for lumbar, the same here, I copy the torical part, the previous part, and then I use control sev. So the reason I'm using control sev is that I know there will be an overlap and I know when I'm doing manual drag it down, it, it won't be nice. I want to have it nice and and attach to each other from top to the bottom, right? So I just control the saturation band on the anterior part and then we have in the corner part. So let's run these three sequences and look at the results. And after that, I will share some parameters for you. All right, the results is like this. We can see there are cervical, torical, and lumbar, three different images, magnitude, phase, and minute. What I will usually do here is that I compose them all together so we have a final image like this. This is the image, the, the final composed image like I show you in the social media. Much nicer to look at and a great overview for the radiologist. Right, so let me show you the technique of how you can compare two sequences and then build them and so on. Let's go to Siemens tree right here. The library in the, from the head. We know that there's an SWI for the brain there, which works great. So let's just take a uh, one of the axial, we go to the editing program. This is the sequences available on Siemens uh, tree. So whatever I'm doing now, I just drag over the one I just used. So we can do a comparison. Like that. So I just took over the cervical, or cervical part, the torical part, they're all the same. What I will do now is that I mark that cervical and the one I used from the Siemens tree. So these two. That one and that one, I mark them with the shift on the keyboard, and then I go to compare protocols. This is very cool in the XA platform. It's very fast and it's easy to compare two different uh, sequences. Let's go in here. So you can see here on this side is the one I optimize. On the other side right here, it's the one from Siemens Tree. You can see what differences are made adjustments compared to each other. I'm just going to walk through fast here for you, but however, you can pause the video and do exactly what I did here if you want to rebuild the protocol. So here, 
So here's one thing I did in the reconstruction, the contrast card in the reconstruction. And I want to have magnitude and phase with Siemens. It's only magnitude. And then I have a saturation band. The resolution is right here. Phase partial, slice partial. The resolution interpolation, the phase and the slice. Everything is here for you. So down here you can see the field of view is, is uh, field of view phase is 99.4. Field of view compared to each other, phase over sampling. This is the most important, the crucial part. So in the beginning, when I start to optimize SWI for spine, I usually use the TE of the head. So it, the outcome of that, uh, those images was very bad. It was so much distortion. There was too much def defacing, right? So it, all the spine was totally dark. So whatever I did, when I reduced the TE to around 5.9, this is a minimum. Even though it's very low TE, this is so sensitive sequence for hemorrhage and so on and so on. So it's more than enough those cases so going from 20 standard from the Siemens reduce it to the minimum 5.9 in this case and you will get a whole different results so if you want to try with the 20 just feel free to do it so you can see what can what I'm talking about but I recommend to lower that one so you can see here the battery is also changed and the gradient mode yeah, there's a little bit of change here and there compared to the original one just to cope with uh, the spine. So another thing I want to mention to you is that matrix optimization, I use it to use the performance mode. The reason for that is the reconstruction is very fast, it's much faster. So you can also try that on other sequences as well. However, whenever you're using DRB, Deep Resolve, it's not available, but uh, there are some bugs there which make it available. And in the beginning, I thought that having it all would bring me faster reconstruction time. However, no, you will get different kind of artifacts. So don't use it on DRB or Deep Resolve. Turn it off and it should be off. But uh, there was some bugs and then you could turn it on, but off. However, other sequences, performance on reconstruction is much faster. So try that if you are struggling with uh, with the reconstructions time on other sequences. There you go, the protocol is shared and you can try to rebuild this and try it on your own scanner. I'm pretty sure it will work on 1.5 Tesla as well. Before we end this video, I just want to ask you a question. Do you do SWI outside the brain? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, don't forget to push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell. You will get a ding ding whenever new things from me are coming up. Until next time, take care and I'll catch up with you. Peace out.